So Nortico is also from the Vino Verde region, but rather than label it Vino Verde, it's uh, labeled varietally because it doesn't have the spritz. So the expectation for it is more about the single varietal. So it's a little bit, um, it was a little bit more rare to see a single varietal wine from Portugal just in general. Portugal, like uh, Austria and Italy, have that history of blending. So they, they often will do field blends. That's um, you know, very typical. Portugal has over 255 indigenous grape varieties. Uh, so technically it has the most indigenous grape varieties per capita. Um, I'm a cork dork, so I love, you know, kind of facts and figures like that. Uh, Italy technically has the most indigenous grape varieties, but Portugal's population is around um, uh, 10 million. So it it's, has a much lower population. Uh, it's sparsely, you know, populated in, in the larger scheme of things. So they have a lot of indigenous grape varieties, and um, typically they didn't necessarily focus on single varietal wines. Uh, and more recently, um, with a lot of genetic testing and people kind of wanting to know, um, you know, what's in the vineyard, especially the younger generations who have kind of gone to enology school in, um, you know, done stints in other uh, countries, they kind of came back and, and wanted to know, you know, what these grape varieties were. So there's been just an investigation in, um, you know, these single varietals and, and the character that they add. So Albarino is the same grape as Albarino. So if you've had Albarino from, from Spain, and again, if you remember how close we are, we're, we're on the border with Galicia or Galicia. Um, so it, it makes sense that there's a, a crossover, a cross-pollination there um, for the Iberian Peninsula. But it's the same, same grape variety um, and just, you know, the Portuguese expression. So um, from the Vino Verde region, where we just were, and again, you can see from the map, the, the top border, you, you go straight over basically into Rijas Paixas, where you find some amazing Albarino. So right next to each other, um, still that Atlantic influence, we're still in uh, the part of Spain and Portugal that's on the coast, uh, the Atlantic coast, and, and receives uh, you know, a maritime influence. So um, Nortico, you have these uh, little plots. There are these little estate plots, kind of similar to, um, to Vera, where um, they've actually identified older vines of Alvarinho. So some young, some, some older vines. So it's this really lovely expression of um, this grape variety uh, from, um, from Portugal. And this expression tends to be to me, instead of uh, from from Spain, often you get very aromatic, very almost like exuberant aromatics, pink grapefruit, a little zestiness. Um, you know, there's this uh, uh, huge liveliness um, to Spanish Albarinos. Um, Portuguese Albarinos in general um, have that lovely aromatic component, but a little bit more floral and mineral, not quite as um, that kind of you know, grapefruit rind uh, zest character. It's a, it's a little bit uh, softened, um, which I think is, is again, really nice. There's almost this like lemon oil, um, again, kind of fennel, s something slightly herbal, but uh, on, on kind of that, that you know, uh, softer note, uh, citrus component, like um, a little bit more like um, kind of like green pear. Um, and then again, that minerality. So, um, and you, Amy, you see, uh, in terms of um, Portugal, uh, that you know, you see that influence. The label refers to the hand painted tiles of the region. So, I had the folks that raised their hands, um, if you've been to Portugal, you see this really lovely um, hand painted tile, the atle atle ateliers, um, and they're they're hand painted and then glazed uh, and fired. So. Um, it's this tradition that, and, and the Portuguese were uh, traders. They, they typically um, exported a lot of their culture um, to other countries and, and imported a lot of other countries' cultures as well. So the food in Portugal um, is, you know, multi, has multi-influences, including um, Asian influences. So the Portuguese language, too, has an Asian influence um, as well on it. Uh, and 
and even the Japanese will uh, give credit to the Portuguese for um, tempura, the style of cuisine that's thing, where things are breaded and fried. So if you've been to um, Portugal, there's bacalao, which is um, codfish, and it can be in many different iterations. It can be grilled, it could be um, sautéed, and it can also be breaded and fried. So the Japanese actually... Um, give the Portuguese credit for uh, exporting that culinary uh, treat that um, we enjoy. Uh, but you also see the color scheme for the Daphinois. The Dutch have this kind of blue and white uh, color scheme as well as uh, the, you know, you find it in Asia as well. And a lot of, uh, a lot of historians will give credit to Portugal for that, um, you know, for the textiles, but also this kind of really lovely uh, blue and white uh, uh, color scheme that is reminiscent of, you know, sea foam or being on the water, um, you know, uh, so it, it's just a, it's part of their um, culture and tradition to do um, the tiles and the tile work, but also have the kind of really lovely blue and white um, color scheme. So that's where the label came from. So again, this is Alvarine U. So single varietal, kind of unique that um, it's a single varietal. And uh, Nortico, again, is a um, the uh, um, a different trellising system that is uh, not the pergola uh, system. It's it's just rows, small little plots of um, traditional um, Alvarinu um, uh, that are, you know, uh, traditionally uh, mostly hand harvested uh, in the Vino Verde region. So um, it's around dinner time. So I see some people are eating or if you're not, I hope you're hungry, but I just wanted to put in the food pairings because that's, you know, that's part of the fun. Um, and again, the, the Portuguese with, uh, you know, uh, basically over 60% coastline, there's lots of seafood. So again, um, cod, uh, bacalao is, is one of the, um, one of the specialties of the region, but, uh, um, you also see uh, with the cuisine a lot of olive oil. There are a lot of olive trees in Portugal, so it tends to be a little bit more of kind of that Mediterranean, Spanish, um, uh, Italian sort of uh, ingredients in terms of cooking. There, you see lots of beautiful tomatoes, again like olive oil, and then hamon. So uh, lots of lots of pork. So that's um, along with the shellfish. So lots of squid, lots of octopus. Um, and they have, uh, for those who've, who've been there, you've seen they've also, they have a canning culture. So it's um, very different than what we think of in the U.S., but there's a, a, a uh, culture with um, small tins, uh, sardines, mussels, cockles, uh, octopus, um, in either, you know, a brine or in olive oil. So that's, that's um, you know, very, very common to see. So again, Nortico, um, you know, one single varietal coastal influence, a little bit, to me, a little bit more briny than the Vera, which is nice, I think. Um, and then, you know, these, these small little plots along the Mino River um, and, and uh, the, to me, the, the acidity uh, pops out a little bit more than, um, you know, than in Vera. Vera has that, that bright effervescent, that, that uh, prickly texture to it, which is, um, you know, fun and kind of lively. Um, Nortico is a, a, is a little bit kind of, kind of calmer. And, you know, it's like Amy Adams versus uh, Helen Mirren, you know, you get this little stately sort of, uh, you know, aspect to, to Nortico or this almost like a little um, kind of cooked fennel or olive oil texture to it. But, but again, kind of lifted, um, you know, really nice tension uh, to the wine as well. I didn't know if James had any uh, comments on the Nortico or if anybody else did. Yeah, and, and guys, feel free to, uh, to use the chat for any any even subtle notes that you're picking up. I mean, for example, I am picking up a lot of the kind of the white floral component that Molly was talking about. Maybe a hint of kind of like um, a little touch of white pepper maybe, but a lot of citrus, a lot of crispness to the wine. Um, it does strike me as, yeah, a little bit more restrained than Albarino. Um, particularly from certain parts of the U.S. Um, but yeah, I, I think that this this wine is uh, um, especially for uh, for a lot of our customers. A lot of people really do come back for this wine a lot, and I can totally see why, as I'm one of them, even though I am in the stores. So I, I love uh, bringing this wine home. To be honest, it's fun, funny. So 
sometimes when you taste wines, they kind of fall on, you know, preferences, whether uh, um, male or female sort of thing. And um, we have a couple wines like Nortico and Flaco that I would have kind of picked like, oh, okay, I think this is going to be, you know, this person's style. And Nortico, um, it's really lovely. It, it it appeals to a, a much broader audience. Uh, and I think that's due to the balance in the wine that, um, you know, that just, that there is a nice tension to it, but there's nothing harsh. The edges are, you know, they're, they're, uh, it has kind of an angular quality, but not uh, sharp edges, just more kind of focused. Uh, and again, that, that really nice tension. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the acid character to it is great. It's not overly abrasive. It's not, um, it's it's really um, really obviously a great wine with food because it is a little bit elevated acid, but it's not the only real structural component that you're only picking up. So um, yeah, I think balance is, is a great word that that you just used there. It's um, uh, yeah, I think I'm it's it's frankly making me hungry too. So <laughs> good. <laughs>